Cars 3 brings back Lightning McQueen for the third installment in Pixar's Cars trilogy. And like all Pixar films, it's loaded with Pixar and Disney Easter eggs like the Pizza Planet truck and Cinderella's carriage. yippee ki movie lovers, it's Jan here, and in this video I'll be revealing where all the usual Pixar Easter eggs including A113 are hidden, as well as uncovering some more obscure ones and how the movie fits in with the Pixar theory. I'm also kicking off my very special Cars 3 giveaway. Two lucky winners will get this awesome The Art of Cars 3 hardback book, which shows off some of Pixar's amazing concept art, storyboards and exclusive insights into the making of the movie. For a chance to win, just subscribe and leave a comment about the film, and also answer the question I'll be asking later in the video. Quick warning, there are spoilers ahead for Cars 3, so take care if you haven't seen the movie yet. Let's start with the Pizza Planet truck, which debuted in Pixar's first feature, Toy Story, and which has appeared in almost every Pixar film to date. In the Cars universe, the Pizza Planet truck is actually a character called Todd, and in the first movie he appeared as an onlooker at the Los Angeles International Speedway. He cameoed twice in Cars 2, the first time appearing on TV, and the second as a spectator at the Radiator Springs Grand Prix. And in Cars 3, Pizza Planet truck Todd is a participant in the Crazy 8 Demolition Derby. And in this movie, the Pizza Planet truck's rocket actually flies into the crowd at one point. Miss Frissa is a cool new character we meet in Cars 3, who collects the license plates of each of the opponents she defeats at the Thunder Hollow Speedway. Miss Frissa also carries a street sign that appears to read West Cutting Boulevard, an Easter egg to the location of Pixar's former headquarters in Richmond, California. And this street sign last appeared in Toy Story 3, above the door in Andy's bedroom. Also on the side of Miss Frissa is the number 58, which the animators included as a reference of the year Miss Frissa voice actress Leah Delaria was born. And the name of Delaria's high school is also on the bus. By the way, I wonder if Miss Frissa's name is a play on Ms. Frizzle, who drives the magic school bus in the animated TV series of the same name. The Pixar Luxo Ball is also in the Demolition Derby race, painted on one of the vehicles participating in the race at the Thunder Hollow Speedway. The Luxo Ball, of course, goes back to Pixar's very first short, Luxo Junior, which features both the Luxo Ball and two desk lamps, one of which appears in Pixar's logo. There's also a couple of A113 Easter eggs in Cars 3. You can see one on the press sticker that Shannon Spokes wears on her side. Spokes is the on-track reporter who's voiced by real-life sports reporter Shannon Spake. And A113 is also the number of Sterling's office at the Rusty's Racing Centre. The A113 Easter egg has appeared in every single Pixar movie to date, and is an homage to the classroom at California Institute of the Arts where the likes of Pixar's John Lasseter studied. And this one's quite hard to spot, but inside Sterling's office, hidden among the trophies, is Cinderella's pumpkin carriage. And could this be an Easter egg to the tree from A Bug's Life, which also appeared previously in Up and Toy Story 2? Back at Thunder Hollow Speedway, there's a sneaky Easter egg to Cars 3 production designer Bill Cohn on the Wild Bill's Racing Cones billboard, which you can spot in the background here. And I wonder whether Wild Bill also provided the cones for Sally's Cozy Cone Motel in Radiator Springs. An important Easter egg in Cars 3 that links the movie to John Negroni's Pixar theory is the first appearance of By and Large, aka BNL, in a Cars feature film, where it appears as a track sponsor at a speedway. BNL is a corporation in Wally -E that basically enabled the pollution of the planet and sent humans away from Earth while it attempted to clear it up. The Pixar theory suggests that Cars takes place after humans leave the planet and before a time hundreds of years later when the events of Wally -E take place. And the presence of By and Large as a racetrack sponsor in Cars 3 supports the suggested timeline. Racer number 31, Terry Cargus, is sponsored by Triple Dent Gum, the chewing gum from inside out with the recurring jingle that plays throughout that movie. Pixar's lucky charm John Ratzenberger returns in Cars 3 as the voice of the truck Mac, and there's a scene with Mac in the movie which includes a very sneaky and obscure NASCAR Easter egg. Before going to the Demolition Derby at Thunder Hollow Speedway, Mac and Lightning decide they want to go incognito. For his disguise, Mac chooses to go as a Jocko Flocko party supplies truck, which is an awesome reference to the real-life monkey called Jocko Flocko that raced with NASCAR champ Tim Flock. Jocko Flocko and Tim Flock drove together in eight races in 1953, including Flock's Grand National win at Hickory Motor Speedway. By the way, I wonder whether the clown on Mac's truck disguise is also a reference to Jangles, the clown that Riley fears in Inside Out. Cars 3 also pays homage to NASCAR's roots in Prohibition-era bootlegging, with a moonshine still that appears in the background of a scene in the woods. 
And those origins also get a nod in the character of Junior Midnight Moon, who is voiced by NASCAR legend Robert Glenn Jr. Johnson, who got his start in racing by making moonshine runs through the mountains of North Carolina and more recently teamed up with a distillery to share his family moonshine recipe, which is sold as Midnight Moon. I also like the shot in the woods of lightning and silhouette leaping across the full moon, which not only has a kind of E.T. vibe to it, but also made me think back to the first Cars movie, where we saw Mater in silhouette leaping across the face of a full moon. And talking of classic movies, I think there's shades of Rocky's story in the scenes of lightning training on the beach, the way he's competing against a new young arrival and how he has to go back to the drawing board to figure out what he needs to do to win, and also how he has to get himself a new trainer. As always, Pixar have included an Easter egg to their upcoming movie in the current film. After Cars 3, Pixar is releasing Coco, a Mexican Day of the Dead story. There's already a Cars Easter egg in Coco where a young boy is wearing a pair of shoes that sport some Lightning McQueen stylings. And Cars 3 director Brian Fee has confirmed there are two Coco Easter eggs in his movie, one of which appears at the Rusty's Racing Center when a homesick car thinks of home, and a picture of the town from Coco appears on one of the training TV screens. And there's a second nod to Coco in the background of another scene when a car is on stage singing. There's a fabulous homage to Doc Hudson, aka the fabulous Hudson Hornet, when Lightning changes his number and colours to Doc's and reveals he's now the fabulous Lightning McQueen. So which was your favourite Easter egg in Cars 3, and were there any you spotted that I missed? And what did you think of the movie? For a chance to win this awesome The Art of Cars 3 hardback book, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment about the movie, and also answer the following question. What was the NASCAR monkey called whose name features on Max Disguise? Make sure you turn on your notifications to get all my new Cars 3 and Pixar videos, and I'll be announcing the winners for the giveaway on an upcoming video. Congratulations to the five winners of my recent Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 giveaway who are on the screen now. And if you're one of them, send me a message on YouTube or via my email, which you can find on my About page, so I can get your details to send you the prize. If you enjoyed this, I really appreciate you hitting that thumbs up button and check out some more of my Pixar and Easter egg videos right here. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Yippee-ki-yay, movie lovers!